And lastly, we need to reattach our fence here. Okay. All right, now we need to re-thread our, uh, our washer and bolts back on. The tighter you make the nut, the less play there is in the handle. So that's locked and that's locked. So I have about right there, I have a very small window with which I can actually move this. So I'm actually gonna back that off a little bit. And I'm looking for about 90 degrees of rotation here. That means I can put it to about 45 there and slide this thing. And I kind of like that. So I'm gonna go ahead and tighten that as is. If you're like me, you basically never take this fence out of square. Um, but there are stop nuts on here for 45 degrees and 135 degrees. And since I'm doing this video, I may as well just show you how to do them anyway. Um, so first of all, we're going to do the 45 degree angle. We're currently at 90 or 90 ish. I'm going to do the 90 last because that's how I'm going to leave it and not touch it again. But to adjust this, uh, this is the release handle for the fence of this uh, jointer. We're going to go ahead and loosen this as well so that we can slide the fence forward. We're going to lift up as far as we'll go. And on this, you also have to release this uh, stop nut here. It's like a plunger, basically. And that's for the 90 degree adjustment. So you pull that out, loosen the handle lift up on the fence and then down and then we're just going to slide it inward now you want one of these combination square heads as well uh, this gives you a nice 45 degree angle here um, and also we'll use it for the 135 as well otherwise you're going to have a hell of a time getting a perfect 45 degree angle and as you can see we're pretty far off there So there's a good amount of gap here. And basically the procedure here is to just have a light source behind this and we're just going to adjust the fence until there's no more light basically. And uh, we're at a nice 45 degree angle. Our stop nut is right here. Since this uses a hex nut, um, if you go a partial turn, so uh, we'll say 1 12th of, of a turn. Basically, if, if the flat side is not up and conversely down, the pointy part in between tends to hit on the bottom here and uh, it, doesn't, uh, it, it doesn't go the amount the, the screw is adjusting, I, I guess is the best way to say it. So you have to basically stick with the flat ends of this hex bolt. Okay, so that's even about as far as it's going to go. And now it's off the table. All right, so that's about where we need it. As you can see, this adjustment is kind of wonky. I'm gonna mark one edge of my nut so that I can see how far I turned it. Okay, so that's where we're currently at. Went a little bit too far, so we need to come back a little bit. That's actually pretty dang close right there. So yeah, that's the 45 degree adjustment right there. I'm gonna call that good. Okay, the next adjustment we need to make is this one right here. This is the 145 degree adjustment and I'll show you how that works. So once again, our handle's loose. This 90 degree locking pin is pulled out and we're gonna go ahead Make sure I don't dump everything. We're gonna pull up and then all the way back, like there. Till we hit this stop nut. And then we're gonna go ahead and lock it. Nope, we're gonna drop it first, then we're gonna lock it. 
I'm gonna pull it to about the edge, just like that. And now I'm gonna lock it. And basically we're gonna use the same combination square head. And we're gonna turn it like this. And that's gonna be our 135 degree. So as you can hopefully see, yeah, this is not square right now. We need to tilt it this way a little bit more, which means our nut needs to come out, or our bolt, I should say. I don't know if you can see that very well, but there's very minimal light there. I could come out just a tad more. Um, but like I said, I really don't ever use this adjustment, and I'm gonna call that good. You see how the adjustment's made. Uh, let's go ahead and do the 90 next. In order to do our 90 degree adjustment, we first need to bring it up to 90 degrees. So loosen your locking handle here. And uh, turn your lock nut so that it's, it pops into the groove here. And we're gonna rotate it, sliding against the table here until it's at 90. And that'll be when the locking ring pops in. So we're now at 90 degrees, so first thing I'm going to do is loosen this handle here. Make sure the fence is on the table here. Nice and evenly on the bottom. And then I'm going to go ahead and lock it. And then also lock my table into position so it doesn't slide anymore. So we need to, we need to leave the locking pin in and adjust, or I'm sorry, uh, loosen, loosen this uh, screw here. This part rotates in reference to the bar here now. Now I can rotate my table. And that's gonna allow me to do the 90 degree adjustment that I need. To do the 90 degree adjustment, you can use the same combination square head if you want. Um, I have these engineer squares here. So I'm gonna use these. This is a six inch and a four inch model. Um, highly recommend using something like this that's very accurate. Um, if you're going for accuracy, otherwise just use whatever you have, uh, carpenter square. If you have a 90 degree block of wood that you know is, is perfectly 90, use that. And I'm going to make the adjustment here. Push the engineering uh, square up against the fence here. And then it's just a matter of moving it into position until I don't see any more light. I'm gonna tighten this down a little bit so that it doesn't flop around as much. I want it to be slightly difficult to move so that I can make finer adjustments. I recommend overextending it a little bit so that you can just kind of tap it into place with a, with a hammer like this small adjustment at a time and we're looking pretty good right there needs to go a little bit further and that's pretty square right there there we go and you want to check on the either end of your uh, your fence there we go that's pretty good. Now that everything's calibrated, the only thing left to do is reassemble this thing. Now, I have two pieces of wood here that I already jointed on these two edges that I marked. And we're gonna compare the result of this prior to adjustment. I'm gonna joint the other two faces and we're gonna compare that to after the adjustments were made. Uh, and we'll see how much improvement we get from that. Okay, so comparing the two cuts, this is the amount of gap left um, before all the calibration work that we did. And as you can see, there's maybe about 130 seconds here. You'll see that a lot clearer if I put them on this side, like this. You 
you can see how much more the air is propagated when I put it on the on the face there. So that's about the amount of gap um, with the two jointed faces in the prior configuration. By comparison, this is this is uh, the one we just did after all the calibration work is done. As you can see, there's not much of a gap there at all. And if I stand them on the end here, so much bigger difference. I don't really see too much there. Maybe a hairline up top. But that may just be caused, be caused by the roughness of the wood on this side because this is going um, the opposite end of the grain. So all in all, very successful. Obviously the reason why you want to do this is because it's going to be a lot easier to glue these edges up um, when they fit very nicely like that. So that's it. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Um, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. Thank you.